Hey guys, how's it going? It's your boy Alex, and welcome to the rodeo. We're back it again, and I have with me a very special guest, the one, the only, Ren the Third. No, we out here, man. What hey, up? How you doing? How you doing? It's chilling, bro. You? Pretty good, man. How's everything? Going good. You shit. know, the same old shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> how's twenty twenty one been for you? It's been going like very good, actually. Man, better than last year. I'll tell you that. So, congratulations yeah. on everything, bro. You you out here working? Yeah, this shit's been. Show after show, shit, I don't, just hard, you know, yeah. hard to explain. <laughs> yeah, that's good, though. Like, uh, most, most artists would just, you know, pandemic happen, all the yeah. time to, to adjust and stuff like yeah. that. But it seems like every time you got a new show, new yeah. music. Out of know. town, too. Exactly. I'm starting to do more shows out of town, too, so it's, good. it's getting good. That's good, that's good. So this is your first time actually being here at Welcome to Rodeo. Yeah. So I, I would like to get to know you talk about what you worked on and what you got moving forward yeah let's do it all right so where are you from man i'm from uh oak cliff dallas oak cliff oak cliff born and raised you know how was life growing up in oak cliff it's chill i guess it's is not it, as, is bad it as bad as, <laughs> it's not as bad as it used to be but you know <laughs> just chilling i'm not the type to be like you know causing yeah. problems and shit but there is people that cause problems and like you know yeah but i'm just like growing up i was just a quiet kid you know mm, so okay. i never really did anything like that do <laughs> you just stick to your own lane and yeah that's good that's good so h how did you actually get into into the music um shit just hanging out with a lot of friends listening to music like damn this sounds cool i want to do music too so mm -hmm. what we would do just growing up just like fuck around really yeah just play around with music and then it was like a group of us and then over time i just decided to go solo with it oh so it was a group first yeah Okay. This shit started, when did it start? Like 2014, like 2014 13, I think. I don't even know, but it was like a group of us. Yeah. And we just made music all the way to like 2018, I think, 2019. 2019 is when I started just doing shit by myself because I didn't really want to wait on anybody to do it. Yeah. So as soon as I did my first show by myself, I was like, oh, shit, this is what I like to do. So mm. I'm going to just keep it going. Is uh, the other people that were in the group are they also making music or right now? No, no, damn. Yeah, so you man. had to imagine. Well, shit. if they are, I don't know if they're making music because <laughs> they don't tell me shit. But oh, okay. it's just you know went different paths. Got you, got yeah. you. So growing up, who would you say were some of your musical inspirations? Uh, Top three. Damn, God fuck. Um, like growing up or like right now. I would say growing up. Growing up, well, growing up, I was real like into old school music, mm -hmm. so I would like listen to like N.W.A., Wu Tang, A Tribe Called Quest. Yeah. Well, I guess those were the three right there. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. So, so nineties. Uh, yeah. You know. Like when we first started making music, we made like nineties music, mm -hmm. and then okay. we were like putting it out, but we got like made fun of for it. Really? In high school for it. So they were like, "Oh, what the fuck is this shit?" You'd be in class, <laughs> then you're just like doing your work minding your business and then you just hear your song playing on the other side of the classroom like oh yeah. fuck then there's one time this teacher was like hey like y'all turn that shit off then the, st the student was like nah this is him right here just quiet kid in the back of the room just it's oh. fucking fire lady yeah. you don't know <laughs> nah. nah but they were doing it to make fun of us though they uh, weren't doing it to like oh let's go hard yeah so after that and how did that it. feel how did that feel you know being Fresh new artists making music nah, and then hearing people yeah. like touch I, I didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, fuck. I, I want to do it, but it was like the first time ever dropping something. So I was like, nah, I don't yeah. know. So I, I went home, deleted it, didn't drop shit for like a year. Oh, wow. But that year, it just was like me finding myself, I guess. I was with this girl and then shit happened between me and her. Yeah. And then... um. Yeah, I was like, fuck that. I'm not going to be sad. I'm going to do music again. Yeah. So I started doing it. And from then on, just now I'm here. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. That's, that's, you know, it seems like it was a, a long process in the sense that, you know, all those obstacles you had to face. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it got to where you love or what you love, yeah. love to do. So that's good to hear, man. Um, how would you say is your, your song making process? How do you go about that? I guess just listening to the beat. The beat has to be fire first. Uh, so you're a beat beat yeah. first so if the beats like banging and i'm fucking with it it's easier to write to yeah but if it's like it's all right it takes more time like my song let it rip that shit yeah. took me like 
it took me months to make just because I wanted it to be perfect. Because mm. usually I don't make like 90s type music. Yeah. But since that's what I started making in the beginning, I finally made a 90s song again. And that's my biggest song to this day. So, Damn, so with dude. that song, I took like a long time to make it because I wanted it to be perfect. And now it's just people my, love it. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, something that I like to do here on this podcast is showcase the artist's music. And, you know, I feel like, you know, that was a perfect setup for you to yeah. showcase this, yeah. this song. So I did, yeah, let's uh, do it. <laughs> uh, present this to the people and let's get to it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're about to listen to Let It Rip by Ren the Third right here. Let's go. Killer got my finger on the trigger I'm always making music, now you feeling kinda bitter I'm not a quitter, I make a motherfucker shiver If you steady talking shit, then I'ma throw you in a river You play a hater, now I'm feeling like Darth Vader When I'm chilling in the layer, trying to become a creator What I gotta do so I can finally get greater You say that you the king, bitch, I be the king slayer Looking all around, hoping I can get down I hate when everybody says I got one sound So I kill that motherfucker, then I put him in the ground I put him in the ground, yeah I put them in the ground Now throw your hands in the sky If you're down with the third I know that motherfucker's scared Cause they know I'm unheard Bitch, I got the strap This ain't no motherfucking act Bitch, I'm from the fucking cliff And I'm about to let it rip Throw your hands in the sky If you're down with the third I know that motherfucker's scared Cause they know I'm unheard Bitch, I got the strap This ain't no motherfucking act Bitch, I'm from the fucking cliff And I'm about to let it rip One and two and three and four Dead motherfuckers always laying on the floor These pussy motherfuckers never walk into the stove Cause they see me creeping up with the Magnum 44 Point to the head, now they bleeding bloody red Better never fuck with me unless you wanna be dead I never gave a fuck about what anybody said Cause I'm only really worried about stacking up my bread Tell me what you wanna do, we know you a bitch and you making a shoe You hitting on mix, I'm still in the booth and you talking the shit, now you losing the two I'm losing my mind, losing the time, losing the grind Feeling behind, need to unwind, I don't know why I don't give a fuck, I'm ready to die Now throw your hands in the sky if you're down with the third I know that motherfucker's scared cause they know I'm unheard Bitch, I got the strap, this ain't no motherfucking act Bitch, I'm from the fucking cliff and I'm about to let it rip Throw your hands in the sky if you're down with the third I know that motherfucker's scared cause they know I'm unheard Bitch, I got the strap, this ain't no motherfucking act Bitch, I'm from the fucking and I'm about to let it rip Dang bro So that We're talking off camera That was uh, Your biggest record To date right Yeah That's my biggest Song right now People like yeah people know it but don't know me if that makes sense like oh shit people follow me that i don't even know and then they tag me in their story and i'm like oh shit like, that's right. dope that, yeah how, how does it feel now going from you know like we were talking about motherfuckers making fun of you making the music to now you know people going <laughs> you see the crowd there yeah. they're just vibing with you how does that it's, feel? it's funny because some people that did make fun of us back then are now like oh like you know like, like i know him yeah was, nah, <laughs> But I don't, I mean, it's kind of feels like, it still feels fake in a way, like, mm. like it's actually happening now. Yeah. Like, I can f see it growing and shit. Like, I performed in San Antonio uh, last month, July. Yeah, how was and that? And uh, that shit, that shit was crazy. Like, I told everybody, hey, all right, everybody put your lights up. Everybody put their lights up and shit. And then that shit just felt like, I don't know, like, I'm still speechless about it. It, it was just so... I don't even know. Like, it was just badass is what it was. Yeah, because it's crazy because we see stuff like this, you know, whenever we go to concerts, whenever we see movies and stuff like that, it's like, damn, I, yeah. that's me. Yeah, bro. that's I'm what really it felt like. When I was rapping in my head, I was like, bro, this shit is actually <laughs> happening right now. So, yeah, that shit. I still watch the videos. I'm like, damn. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. Yeah. That, well, like I said, you know, whenever you got here, congratulations on all your success. You know, Thank you. you've put in the work and, you know, it's time to shine now. So that's, that's what's up, man. Yeah. Uh, what what shows do you have uh, upcoming? Um, This Friday, I got a a show. It's a, it's like a wrestling show, a yeah, deathmatch yeah. show. Uh, we got Pat Ron, Pyrex Pirates, me, 
Um, we got Madhouse, Michael. Nah, I don't remember if anybody else. I'm sorry if I forgot your name, but. <laughs> and then Saturday we got a show in Dallas too with I don't know Jeffrey. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll pull up there. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. yeah, I got you on a ticket, bro. Hey. And then Saturday night we leave to go to Houston to go perform with Jeffrey in Houston too with Guap Mizzle. So mm-hmm. that should be fun. That's crazy to think about, bro. Like, yeah. you know, and then we come back Monday, yeah. And then we leave again Friday because we have another show in Houston Friday again Damn. with uh, Xavier Wolf. So. Damn, bro. Yeah. How does that feel? <laughs> I, I love performing with Xavier Wolf, bro. That shit. Every time I perform, like with the big artists, yeah. the crowd always shows love, like more love than your local crowd. If that makes sense, I get what you're saying. Yeah, damn, bro, that's crazy to think about. Like, you know, it just goes to show putting in that work and you know persevering to all those obstacles. You yeah. get to a point that you know, like like you said, this is like you're living the dream type. Yeah, thing. I'm very grateful for it too, because it's like yeah. I never thought it would happen. Like just growing up, I was like, damn, bro, like am I doing it right? Is mm-hmm. this going to pay off or am I wasting my time? So yeah. now it's like, I guess it was worth it. <laughs> For shit show. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Uh, question I had, how did you get your name? How did how did you <laughs> select that name? So a lot of people don't know. So when I tell them, they're like, oh, shit. So basically, Ren are my initials. Yeah. So my name is Rodrigo Enrique Navarro the third. Uh-huh. So I get my initials, Ren the third, and then. That, oh, it damn, came out. that's yeah. slick that's yeah. slick bro a lot, of, a lot of people just i don't know people think my real name is ren but i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah damn okay got you got you because you know sometimes artists they just be randomly randomly yeah. selecting whatever names so random that's, ass names but hey whatever floats your boat i guess yeah for sure for <laughs> sure um so what really keeps you motivated to keep going uh because as an up-and-coming artist it could be tough at times yeah but what really keeps you motivated well right now i guess I'm having a tough time making new music, but what keeps me wanting to keep going is the yeah. shows, really. Like, pulling up to the shows, seeing people sing my songs that I don't even know is like that. It's like, oh shit, like people actually do listen to my music. So yeah. it makes me want to keep making more. And it also makes me want to make more because, I mean, I want to perform new shit. So, oh yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> I, I feel like with shows, because I love going to concerts, I feel like with shows, it's crazy. Like, the energy levels. You know, it's one thing making the song in the studio, yeah. But in the concert, bro, like you know, you yeah. just—it's just some crazy shit. Um, can you, do you still remember your first performance? Yeah. How did that go? <laughs> um, shit. Well, my first performance ever, like getting on stage. Yeah. The shit was at a talent show at, at school. Oh shit! But it wasn't my school though; it was a different school. So <laughs> the group up. we were in, four of us went to the same school, and the fifth dude went yeah. to a different school. So they had like this talent show. I don't know what the fuck it was, but he signed us up. He was like, oh, let's perform here. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, all right, fuck it. Let's go. The video is actually on YouTube. Um, I don't know. But if you watch the video, everybody's just standing in one spot, just like nervous. We were all nervous. We were yeah, yeah, all yeah. nervous as fuck because it was like our first show in front of people we didn't even know. So, <laughs> But out of everyone, I was like the most energetic one, like. I showed a couple people back when we went to school the next day. Yeah. They're like, damn, like, that's your first time performing? I was like, yeah. They're like, oh, well, it looks like you've been performing. I was like, nah, bro. Like, I was really nervous that day, yeah. but yeah, that show was, uh, it was kind of whack, but hey, it was the first one. I mean, yeah. you got to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah. It know. was fun, though. It was, it was fun. It, it was like, damn, like, I want to, I want to do it again. See, all these things pretty much are building the foundation of the artist that you are today, you know, from, yeah. from, uh, you know, getting hate at the at an early start from performing at, at an early start yeah. you know sometimes these artists they go through the performance and the, and the hate later on mm-hmm. and they don't know how to handle it yeah so this has been building you yeah with, like right now you, if somebody hates me i mean shit. i've been hated that's it since that's it day one <laughs> so it's like it doesn't really affect me anymore got you got yeah. you so uh what would you say is uh your personal thoughts on the dallas music scene what do you like what do you don't like about the scene um let's see what i like well i like everybody that does their own shit like everybody i guess in a way everybody kind of has their own sound yeah but there is some people that try to copy other people Mm -hmm. so it's like there's some people that that i really do fuck with like in the local scene and what i don't like there's a lot of things i don't like (laughs) that talk to me about that damn bro um 
I don't even know where to start. Mm-hmm. What can we improve? We can improve more support is what we can do. Probably like show more support, not with like other artists, but like people. Mm. I don't think people like to support people that are doing like shit. I don't know why. I think it's because they're like, oh, we came from the same place. Yep. How come you're doing something that I'm not doing? Yeah. So they don't want to support you. Because people that used to go to my first shows don't go to any of my shows no more. So it's like, I thought you supported mm. me, you know? But yeah, I don't fucking know. Motherfuckers only like you until you start doing better than them, honestly. Yeah. So, you know, I completely agree with what you said. Like, um, even when we first started performing, yeah, everybody would be around us, like other artists and shit. Yeah. As soon as I started doing big shows, they just, oh, fuck him. Like, you know, the fuck did I do? <laughs> just doing me. Yeah. But there's a lot of fake motherfuckers out there. Like, I ain't going to say no names, but there's a lot of fake people out there that show fake support to mm. people. But there is people I fuck with, so. A lot of people I fuck with, really. But I ain't trying to start no shit, but, you know. <laughs> no, for sure, because, like, I was I was just about to say how, you know, from the start, you know, I get most of my support from other surrounding cities yeah. compared to here. Yeah. So, like, it's, it's crazy to see how at first everybody's like, oh, hell yeah, do yeah. your thing. <laughs> and then they see you start doing your yeah. thing, bro. They're like, ah, nah, nah I didn't, slow down there, yeah. buddy. I didn't think he was going to do it for <laughs> real. Yeah. Type shit. Not like, yet. in San Antonio, there's that was, they showed way more love than they showed me here oh, i got shit. people texting me and dming me hey when are you coming back when are you coming back I was like bro that i love san antonio like that they showed like hella love more than here really but i mean dallas is always going to be my home so i'm always going to show love whether they want it or not so um whenever whenever uh the pandemic happened of course shows you know we couldn't do shows how did you go about that what what uh how did the Rona situation affected you musically? <laughs> that shit fucked me up. That shit just inside. Yeah. Didn't have a job. Oh shit. I was just that's when I made my album really, my last album. Yeah. Um I was just like I don't even know what the fuck to do like performing like in before the pandemic, I was doing shows like big shows. Mm-hmm. I was performing with Guap. Um shout I did out a, to them. I did a wrestling show with them too. Shout out Guap Gang. Daily Ooze, that's who threw yeah. the shows. Um, yeah, it was just a lot of shows. Everybody was fucking with me. So I was like, damn, I think this year is going to be pretty good. So, ah. And then, boom, this shit happened. Yeah. And then I just, ah, it's going to be a couple months, a couple weeks. So everybody's going to forget about it. Hell no, that shit, fucking year. I was like, fuck. So I was like, all right, I'm going to just make a music thing. That's the only thing I can do right now. So I made a song called Stuck in My Room because I was like, stuck in my room so then after that i just kept making music 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 and then i dropped my album in i don't even remember i think it was august of last year and then um they they threw some halloween shows last year and i started performing again so we back yeah he said we back and (laughs) and then i just performed shit felt good to perform new music people knew it so that was good too yeah and then i didn't perform again till december i threw a show well, I didn't like that show. <laughs> and then uh, fast forward to February, I performed with Jeffrey. And then, yeah, now we're here. Damn, that's crazy to think about how, like, you know, like you said, time was pretty much on, on your side and you had yeah. a... In the pandemic, bro, to, I was like, I was like, fuck, like, what do I do now? Like, performing... Back in the corner. Yeah, like, I was like, fuck. Like, I felt, I was like depressed, bro. Like, I ain't even gonna lie. I was like, damn, like, I don't know what the fuck to do now yeah just making music i mean my girlfriend at the time we were just she was like real supportive so she like helped me through it so once i dropped the album i was like i felt like a relief because mm-hmm. everything in the album is what i was feeling at the time Going so, through and stuff. yeah damn and then the shows came and then just did my shit <laughs> and we back in business yeah for sure for sure what did you learn during the pandemic about yourself uh damn that's a tough question i don't even i don't know i really don't know i just i don't even know to be honest yeah sounds like dealing with adversity adversity and being locked locked in like either fight or flight you know yeah so you know some people would have been like man fuck this we saw a lot of artists yeah say fuck this you know why keep going yeah there was a lot of people before the pandemic i knew made music yep pandemic happened they kind of just went mia i don't know what the fuck happened but hey i mean some people just can't 
keep it going, I guess. <laughs> that's true. That's yeah. true. Uh, what's the biggest obstacles you faced as a new up and coming artist? Uh, let's see. I guess trying to get as many fans as I can. Like, mm -hmm. it's kind of like money wise too. Traveling. Um, and I guess right now is like trying to figure out how to make new music. Because, like, the sets I do at the shows is like, I think they're good. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the crowd thinks it's good too if they're fucking with it. But now it's like, how do I make music that's better than what I got now? Mm. So that's where I'm stuck. Like, I'm working on an album right now, but it's not, I'm not really fucking with it because it's like, I want it to be my best or better than what I did, you know? Yeah, of course. And something about me, I, I'm always hard on myself because I want to be better. So I'm like, it has to be good. If it's not good, then don't do it, you know? We'll crumple it up and yep. next to... Next next song. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's how it is. I feel like, you know, even just creators or even people as per, as uh, in general, they're always hard on themselves. Like, your friends could tell you one thing. Your your uh, girlfriend, your family could be like, oh, I fuck with that, this and that. Yeah. But, like, you're like, nah, this ain't the one type yeah. shit. That's, that's when you realize you're like, damn, like, are they telling me because it's actually good or are they just telling me because they're my people, you know? No, yeah, for sure. Um, so right now, would you say because of all the hard work, maybe you need a, you know, a little little break to get that crater, crater block off of you or yeah, what do you think? That's what I was thinking of doing like after October. Because like, everything's on go right now, yeah. so maybe it's just like. I feel like with all the shows happening, I don't have time to just sit back. Mm -hmm. and work on music so i have a shitload of shows but i think my last show for the year maybe yeah you never know but i think my last show for the year would probably be the xavier wolf show in dallas october 30th yeah so um, just go all out that show and then work on the album probably drop it sometime later this year early next year but we'll see what happens i was just about to ask that do you have a, a set goal of when do you want to plan to drop drop the album um i would want to drop it by the end of this year but i don't want to rush it either because yeah. i don't want it like sound rushed i mean i got it like i got songs finished they're just not recorded because mm -hmm. i don't have time to record but yeah i would want to drop it sometime this year before the year ends at least got you got you that's what's up man um currently are you signed no no do you plan on signing um probably not unless it's worth it i guess <laughs> life changing yeah then if if you could who would you would you sign to an artist or would you sign to a big label or you know or you just like man I, I wouldn't. um out there's only a few i would sign to i would probably just sign to g59 or like team sesh or something like that but other than that i just gotta see like if yeah. it's worth it or not gotcha but right now i mean i'd rather just be independent Mm -hmm. as long as i can so dope dope what do you think is the next step you have to take as an artist to get you to that next level and not just do you know uh smaller shows but bigger venues like the next step uh i, I guess just network with people like bigger people not like local people anymore mm -hmm. i think it's time to like network outside of dallas and texas to get my name more out there than just here Got you. And uh, for the new album that you have going on, do you plan on putting some features or is it just going to be full right um, the third? The last album I did was just me by myself. Um, I kind of want to do it just me by myself again, but who knows? I might get a feature yeah. here or there. Got you. Got you. That's what's up, man. Um, so are you Hispanic or are you Mexican? Hispanic. Or Hispanic. As a Hispanic you know, it's so easy to go to the, the Hispanic music route. You know, yeah. the fans are super loyal, super, yeah. they they support you 100%. Why did you choose the lane of, like, hip-hop and uh, and rap? Because growing up, my parents, they're the ones jamming out to Ice Cube, Cypress oh, Hill. Shit. So me growing up, I'm a little-ass kid in the back of my dad's car, loud-ass speakers. I'm like, oh, shit, like, what, what's going on? Gotcha. So your parents were the ones that they yeah. put you on the... My parents, my uncle... Yeah, my parents and my uncles, that's yeah. basically who. And do you feel like there's there's been a acceptance now of the Hispanic rappers compared to how it was five, ten years ago? Um, I think or, so. Or are they still like... like I think uh, it's still kind of harder, but uh, I think okay. it's a little bit more now. Have you have you faced any like uh, situations where they're like, 
bro like you know why the fuck you doing this yeah you know? nah not yet i mean i hope not but some people when they listen to my music they meet me like oh i didn't know you were mexican mm, so. got you got you what are your thoughts on the hip-hop scene just in general as a whole right now like yeah right now mm. this very moment we got streaming it seems like now there's a little bit more street rappers coming in from yeah push istsg um compared to like in 2016 it was more like uh uh you could say kind of like your little uzis or trippies yeah. and stuff like that yeah. what 2016 are your thoughts? was a good year that was yeah but right now um i don't know it sounds like a lot like sometimes they be playing music in the car and i'm like who the fuck is this it all sounds the same to me really like mm. a lot of the new big people kind of sound the same to me so, so you say a little bit more you, we need a little bit more creativity or yeah got you got like you. me i'm more i listen more to like underground music than like the mainstream and stuff like that so and that's just because you want to stick to that or yeah. do you want to get influenced because my big influences right now are just like underground music so that's what i'm like i guess trying to do too where do you see yourself five years from now um hopefully headlining shows like just me by myself instead of having to open up for people mm -hmm. that's that's my main goal with shows I want to like headline like, oh, people are coming to see Ren the Third, yeah. not so and so, and he's opening up for him, yeah. you know. But your name big, yeah, big in the, yeah. in the <laughs> people sure. singing my songs and shit. So what what three cities would you like to perform at that uh, you were, that you haven't performed at yet? Well, my main one is New York because I used I've been to New York twice. So, but I, when I went, I didn't go for like music. It was just like with my family and shit. Yeah. So. I remember going, and now that I'm making music, I would want to, like, go and perform there. Oh, shit. Um, I would say New York. I'm walking here. <laughs> <laughs> Miami. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, fuck. I would say LA again, but one that you haven't said or that I've been to. Because LA, you already did it, so that was a good experience like something shit, i would say paris bro like something crazy i was yeah. about to say something wild, like in bro. russia or something type shit yeah. you know, i have fans something. in russia too so which is crazy too so oh shit. yeah them russians yeah <laughs> you get the support <laughs> man it's, it's crazy to see like the analytics and stuff like mm -hmm. where where people because i've seen some bro from like australia like from my podcast yeah. and stuff and you're just like damn bro it's yeah. crazy to see this motherfuckers really supporting out here hey yeah like in europe I, like i want to do like a tour in europe hopefully one day yeah. so that'll be pretty cool to do and it seems like europe they they kind of show a lot a lot of love for artists that are good performers you know yeah. because it seems like you know in the u.s we have big artists but then some of them they're not good performers they'll yeah. just stand right there just yeah. like that but europe you know <laughs> edm is huge freaking uh rappers that be exciting yeah i yeah. got a edm yeah. song with hesh shout out hesh um he remixed one of my songs, "Dead to the Feds." Yeah, that that was crazy because yeah. that's a big that's a big feature. Yeah, he that shit went crazy. How did that come about? Um, to be honest, I don't even remember. I don't even remember when we first followed each other, but mm. I was just like looking at who was watching my stories, and I saw a blue check mark. And I was like, "What the fuck?" Oh shit! So I clicked his name. You thought it was an Instagram thought? Nah. No, <laughs> and then I clicked his name, and then I was following him, and then he was following me, and I was like, "What the fuck?" So I was like, oh, he makes EDM, like dubstep. Yeah. So I checked this stuff out. Then he had posted like a snippet or something. And I swiped up. I was like, oh, this shit's hard. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, your shit's hard too. Turns out he's from Oak Cliff too. Oh, so shit. we just decided to work on some shit. We have like a couple songs already done. So you said you still have music with him as well that, that you're working on? Yeah, Damn, we got bro. like probably like four or five songs. Yeah. We're working on, we're supposed to be working on an EP, but... He just dropped the EP with Lil Texan. Shout out Lil Texan too. Um, they dropped the EP, I think yesterday it was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're going to work on it soon. I'm just working on my shit. He's working on his shit. He has a tour coming. I got my shows coming. So it doesn't matter. It's working schedule. Yeah. Got you. Got you. Uh, what is a lesson that you've learned that you could uh, give to a new up and coming artist that, you know, that way they avoid, you know, going through that? Uh, I mean... Everybody always says this, but it's true. Just be yourself. You got to do what you want to do to be where you want to be. Don't let nobody, like, tell you you can't do this, you can't do that. 
If they tell you you suck, but you think it's hard, then it's hard because you think it's hard. Because there's people like, oh, your shit sucks. Like, no, it doesn't, bro. Because yeah. I've had people who told me, oh, let it rip, bro. That that song ain't it. Damn. Look at it now. Damn. Yeah, bro. I'm talking to Tokyo, bro. I see you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nah, Tokyo's the homie. When I first showed him the song, I was like, nah, bro, I don't think this is it. I ain't really feeling it. And then I was like... Well, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I was like, well, I mean, you got your opinion, bro. I think this is probably but my it's best wrong. song. Yeah. <laughs> but there's other people like that, too. A lot of people were like, uh, yeah. it's because it was different. Yeah. So, As someone who is from the cliff, how did it go about whenever you were making this type of this type of music instead of the typical... You know, just like, you know, the typical typical Oak Cliff sound. Did you get any back, back uh, like backlash? Or like, you know how the the typical street freaking, you know, because um, you you do talk about certain things like that. Yeah. But it's not the that typical Oak Cliff sound. Oh, okay. You um, know what I'm saying? Like, you know, your Trap Boy Freddy's or your. Yeah, it's not like, a, I guess, street rap is what it's called. Yeah. Like trap, I guess. Yeah. Yours, yours is more like. You know the '90s influence, underground, like yeah. you know. I guess when um when I first started doing music, I was like real into like fucking uh like the '90s and shit. Mm -hmm. But once I got introduced to like the underground, like Puya, Xavier Wolf, Suicide Puya. Boys, <laughs> and just stuff like that, Bones. Yeah, I was like, oh, this shit's hard. Like this shit's bad. That, that, I like you gravitated this. Yeah. towards to that. So I started listening to that more, and then I was like, oh, this, like, I want to make music now like this instead of the 90s. So after that, I just started doing more shit like that. Like Ramirez. Yeah. A lot of people compare me to, like, Ramirez, Puya. I could see that. And, like, some people even say Bone Thugs, like you said earlier. Yeah. yeah so that's Especially pretty the, cool. the the sped up flow. Yeah. That's, you know, iconic from them for sure. Yeah. Do you get any... Do you you know? Do you get any offense whenever people say it like that? Like, I like, used to a little bit because like you want to be your own person. Yeah, you know. I used to like when I first started making it, they would like call me like a clone and shit, and then like oh like oh, oh you're trying to be like them. I'm like whoa, I'm just influenced by them. Yeah, I mean, they're their own person. I'm trying to do it too, but making my own way. Yeah. So now when people are like oh like oh shit, you remind me of so and so is like oh like now I'm hearing different names every now and then, so it feels pretty cool to be compared to them yeah because it's not it's not bad comparisons yeah you know, imagine they were comparing to some somebody who's trash bro you're yeah. like man where are you getting that from <laughs> what the fuck yeah i just hope somebody oh like you remind me of six nine bro like nah bro <laughs> <laughs> shit bro <laughs> <laughs> fuck that yeah. <laughs> nah but that that's good that you're like you said it's not a it's not a diss it's you know you're your own person you have your own stories yeah. from your songs it's not like you're literally copying well, at the same time it depends how they say it too exactly yeah. exactly but lately it's just like love like oh you remind me of ramirez like oh got you got you what would you say is the biggest misconception of you uh like what do you mean like in the sense that people have this idea of you and but in oh. reality it's something else <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people think i'm mean bro like when damn. i first meet people like damn bro i thought you were gonna be an asshole i thought you were gonna be like like fucked up like mean and all fucked that shit I, was like, I don't know that's what they tell me and i'm like nah bro i'm like i mean i think i'm pretty cool yeah I think i'm pretty funny i make people laugh so it's like i like to do shit so i don't think i'm mean i hope not but <laughs> people say that ab about me as well because uh you know it's funny because last week my friend told me that he's like bro if you weren't smiling all the time, yeah. I'll be like, bro, you'd be the biggest asshole or something. Like, <laughs> oh, this motherfucker got something against me. Yeah. But, you know, I get what you're saying whenever you say that. You know, I guess it's with the pictures, too, like yeah. on Instagram. but On that, some, on some just, dark shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's just my character, bro. Nah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, when it's all said and done, what is the legacy you want to le leave behind in the game? Um, shit. I guess I want people to remember me as, like, somebody who didn't give a fuck and just did what he wanted to do and got where he wanted to be mm. basically i guess yeah got you got you and uh before we do head out i want to showcase one of one more song what other song do you want to uh, show for the people well i forgot to tell you this story so like my uncle my uncle alex he's uh he has his that's homie. A real name i already know from the name that's that's a real <laughs> one right there yeah it's my uncle bro um he has his homie his name's tone Tone would manage for ASAP Ferg and shit like that. What the fuck? Like tour management. 
Yeah. So anytime Ferg would come to like Dallas or Austin or I think, yeah, just I don't I forgot where else we saw him, but we saw him yeah, in a couple Texas. cities. Yeah. And when we would go to his shows, I would be backstage with them, hanging out with Ferg, yeah. just chilling. Um. So I guess another thing is me being backstage with them, seeing how Ferg does it, because at that time I wasn't doing music and thinking about music was not even in my brain. But but you were seeing. Yeah, because at the time I was taking pictures. I was like a oh, photographer shit. too. So just being backstage with them, seeing how he does it, seeing how he performs, kind of like motivated me to perform like that too. So, yeah, shout out to Ferg too. That's probably one of my like yeah. idols too. Damn, it's, I, I could just imagine the shows, the songs, yeah. you know, the songs are the type of motherfucking songs you put to get fucking yeah. hyped. So Especially like watching it, like I forgot when it was, I think it was 2017, we went to that festival, Austin City Limits, yeah. ACL. Um. Yeah, I was on stage with Ferg. Well, not performing, just like on the side with my uncle and Tone. And then, uh, yeah, fucking big ass crowd, the shitload of people, mobbed them, shitload of people in the crowd. I was nervous. I wasn't even performing or anything. <laughs> I was just nervous to be in front of them. But yeah, when I I was like, damn, like that that was badass. Like I want to perform in front of a crowd like that one yeah. day. So shit, that's crazy to see. It's crazy to experience at at a young age, like you said. It, Music wasn't even a thing yeah. like that, so. I was just taking pictures from him. That's basically all I was doing, so. Dope, dope. Yeah. One other question I do want to ask. Uh, once you get to that level, do you plan to stay here in Dallas, or where would you go? Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind Dallas. I mean, I actually like Dallas. I don't like when people are like, oh, fuck Dallas. I want to leave here. Yeah. I mean, hey, dude, well, that's what you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> we need more space here anyway. It's just yeah. packed. <laughs> Damn, Cali motherfuckers yeah. coming in this hole. Whole- <laughs> yeah, if y'all want to leave, y'all can leave. Just hurry up, get the fuck out of here. Cause <laughs> I need room when I'm driving too much traffic. I'm, and I'm shit. house shopping out here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would want to live here or build like, here. Yeah, or if anything, New York, whatever. Yeah, you saw you saw the energy of New yeah. York. I love New York, bro. It's busy. It's yeah. crazy. Everybody's on go. Yeah, for for sure on that one. I mean, my main goal, like when I'm like up there, is to have a place in LA. Dallas and New York, oh, every yeah. coast, just chill out. But hey, no, we'll, no we'll, Miami yeah. one. Maybe, 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 maybe. Yeah, little vacation spot. Uh, they got a lot of girls up there, so yeah. Shit, damn. <laughs> they got that fat booty. Oh yeah, in the nice. beach, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's listen to this. Finna jam out to uh, "Death to the Feds." Um, y'all pull up to the show and march to this shit, bitch. Cause I be that fucking killer I be creeping through your hood with the fucking red dot Now I'm aiming really steady so I get a headshot Fuck a cop, let him drop, maybe all this shit will stop But it's not, hoping that this motherfucker comes up to my spot Fuck police brutality and your shitty mentality They always try attacking me but no, they'll never get to me I'm loading up the clip to let that motherfucker rip And when I see you in the cliff, you best believe all in your shit, bitch So this is another one that the people would love, right? Yeah, when me and uh, shout out Kush Costa, Madhouse, uh, when we performed that whole together, we just y'all kill it. Yeah, everybody, I love performing with Kush Costa, bro. 
Hey, bro, if you're watching this, I know you're at work whipping up that panda, but it's all good, though. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah that's that's one of my brothers right there so we always perform when we perform together i feel like it's more energy on stage when you perform with more people yeah damn that's crazy though because some people you, you know they just want to be the center of attention yeah but that's that's good that you have that energy for sure i mean even if he can't pull up to the show i still kill it without you bro <laughs> <laughs> damn son <laughs> nah we, we play around like that Nah, for sure. Uh, where can the people contact you, find you, stream your stuff, YouTube, anything like that before we head out? Um, Y'all can follow me on Instagram at Ren the Third, R E N T H E T H I R D. Um, Graveyard Records. I forgot the Instagram for it. What is it? Uh, Graveyard Records TX for Texas. Um, I'm on all streaming platforms, really. Ren the Third with spaces. I hate when you motherfuckers put my name together, bro. That shit. Oh, it's space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they be putting, like, Ren the Third all together. And it's like. That looks like a long ass Yeah. I don't even know why, but, hey. I guess it's Instagram, I guess. That's, yeah. yeah. They be hauling like that, for sure. But, yeah. I'm on everything. Y'all fuck with me. Y'all follow my music. Y'all pull up to one of my shows. Y'all buy a shirt. We got uh, all sizes. And, uh, yeah, hit me up for any. Any features, any... Any features, shows, any shows, anything. Hit me up if you got any questions. All right, guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, get notified whenever we drop new content, and we out. Peace. Run the third.